Hello everyone, my name is Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the forbidden tech. Is Sturdy good for DPS gain? So I've had this asked about or mentioned before in the comment section of videos that Sturdy is actually a DPS gain because dodging is a DPS loss. This came up again on the latest video, so I finally decided, you know what, let's make this video because I haven't wanted to do it before. You know the deal. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Go over to the Twitch. I am probably over there right now if I'm launching this on Thursday. And over there, I have a ton of hunt passes I'll be giving away, or I will be giving you a Twitch bundle if you already have the hunt pass, so you have pretty much everything to gain. So let's get down to it. Sturdy is a cell that will prevent you from being staggered on a cooldown, and the cooldown decreases as you increase the strength of the cell. As you can see, at plus six, it is a five second cooldown. And if you are going to be taking damage that frequently, then you are going to be needing something to recuperate that lost damage. And the argument here is that the dodge roll would take too long so that the sturdy or iceborne would be able to out damage the person who has to roll around to actually dodge these attacks. There are a few reasons that this doesn't actually work in a practical sense, and let's go over that. So first and foremost, you do inherently have to give up DPS to be able to run a build like this. To fit Sturdy onto the build, you either have to clean up plus three or plus six of your perk economy, and if you are using Sturdy, that is most likely going to come from Predator, which is actually one of the best damage sources in the game. But you can't practically run Predator and Sturdy together because you lose your Predator damage bonus. And then the other part of this is that we have to give up some sort of damage bonus from our Omni Cell at the very least, or our Lantern as well. So to regain our lost HP, you would most likely be running Iceborne, or if you want to run Discipline plus the Koshai Lantern, perhaps, that could work as well. If you were doing Discipline Koshai Lantern for this, then you very much so would probably have to be running Catalyst plus Aether Drive Tonic for this to work. But if you were to choose Iceborne for this, and with an added benefit of it having an extra sturdy ability on the Iceborne activation, then you are already losing hundreds on hundreds of DPS to an identical Revenant build. How many hundreds of DPS are we giving up? Let's just jump into a quick DPS test on the training grounds to see. So before you say, yes, I understand that the point of this is saying we don't have to dodge attacks, so how much damage are we gaining here? And we will factor that in, but let's just start off with a just straight up DPS with the Revenant build. Keep in mind that Catalyst and Overpower aren't really going to be a factor here either, when Catalyst would be slightly better when you're choosing a Damaging Lantern, and Overpower is going to be slightly better on this build because we have extra damage, so in turn we get part breaks and staggers faster. Since this example build, I'm using Adrenaline, I'm gonna go ahead and run out our stamina before actually starting. Just keep in mind that dummy DPS testing in general isn't highly scientific, but in this case, it's going to be so pronounced of a difference that it isn't really going to matter in terms of, like, fluctuating values. So after way more damage than any behemoth would ever have health, we are sitting comfortably at 3,000 DPS. So now let's go sturdy, and to make it a more fair comparison, I guess, we'll just even use the Pangar Lantern for this. So now let's just look at the Iceborne's damage by comparison. If I had to guess, this will probably be 2,000 DPS. So after another crazy amount of damage that you would never have to ever do to a behemoth, we are actually a thousand DPS lower than our Revenant build. So the main question is, how would a dodge be affecting these sort of DPS values? And if we dive into how long a dodge takes, we can see that this is the start of the dodge animation. We start glowing blue here. And it takes us about 38 frames before we would be able to stand up and do anything. Like uh, right here or right here is when you would first be able to do some sort of attack input. But let's be a little bit generous here and we'll call it 40 frames even. Plus that just makes the calculations here easier because that's exactly two thirds of a second. Get ready because we're bringing a calculation into this. We're gonna use this number. We're gonna use 366,000 damage, which was dealt over the course of 120.59 seconds. 
And for the Iceborne build, we'll be using this damage snapshot of 350,000 damage over the course of 166.64 seconds. So for these high damage mounts, we had 46 seconds in between when we hit each damage threshold. Running a calculation with these values, it would have taken us 31 dodges during the course of this fighting to actually match the same amount of time as the Iceborne build. But 350,000 damage is not exactly a realistic behemoth health number, so let's go for a more realistic number, let's say 80,000. Doing a simple conversion, if we kept those same DPS values from the training grounds, which we most likely wouldn't, but let's just assume that we do, then it would take us 26.34 seconds to kill that behemoth. If we did the same conversion for our Iceborne build here, we would find that we would need 38.04 seconds to kill the same health behemoth. So you can see here that this generates a difference of 11.7 seconds just from having Sturdy and Iceborne on the build instead of Revenant and Predator on the build. We can then convert the number of seconds we get here into the number of dodges we would need for the Iceborne build to make up this time difference. And as we established, our dodges take two-thirds of a second, so 0.6 repeating seconds to perform, which then put simply, we would have to dodge 18 attacks for us to lose enough damage that Sturdy would then become worth it. And this would not be taking into consideration any differences that were being made by differences in overpower uptime. Which, as I said already, since we are doing more damage with this build, we would have more stagger damage and more part damage, meaning that we would be faster to get overpower uptime on the Revenant and Predator build. If you want to say then, okay, but these aren't the exact DPS numbers that we are going to be seeing in a real case scenario, because they are going to be a bit higher on the dummy behemoth than they would be against a normal behemoth. Let's go ahead and just say we'll cut these in half, which is more achievable on a bigger number of fights. And let's even cut the behemoth HP down as well. Let's cut it down to 60,000. And let's just go ahead and round our Revenant build to 1518 damage per second. Then we're going to get that we took this behemoth out in 39.52 seconds. Then we'll do the same thing for our Iceborne build here. And we'll see that we need 57 seconds for this one. But this only generated a bigger difference of 17.5 seconds, which then if we converted this into the number of dodges that we needed for this to matter, then we get 26.25 dodges, which means that we would then need 27 dodges for the Revenant build to be worse than the Iceborne build. So again, for these calculations, we aren't factoring in overpower, we aren't factoring in the extra uptime that the Revenant builds would be getting, and we aren't factoring in Catalyst. You could probably expect this number to go down to I don't know, 14 dodges or something like that. But in any case, even a very difficult behemoth fight isn't going to require nearly this amount of dodges. Also factor in if you're running Discipline instead of Revenant, then your Discipline parry is a dodge as well as an attack for you. So this fight was from the Hunting Grounds Flawless video, and I counted up the number of dodges that we needed to do. I think technically we had probably about eight dodges. You can add a plus two because I used my Chronovore legendary ability to avoid taking damage for two, for what would be two dodges. The fight took three and a half minutes and you know, it's it would be a stretch to say that I had to dodge 10 times during this fight. I did play it a bit safer than I typically would have played a fight because I was intending to not take damage on this fight. But for this fight, you aren't going to even be able to face tank every hit, even if you wanted to. But as long as this fight was, I still didn't have to dodge nearly these number of times. And that's really the main issue for Sturdy, is that the necessity to dodge in a lot of fights really isn't there. This is the absolute extreme scenario where we have one of the highest health behemoths in the game, one of the highest stagger thresholds in the game, one of the highest part damage thresholds in the game. And I still didn't have to dodge more than 10 times, really. If we were to actually go up against a behemoth with 60,000 HP, which is more typical for, like, the hunting grounds hunts, then the reality of this is that its part damage threshold would probably be low enough to the point where we don't even have to dodge a single time during the fight. Maybe it would make us have to dodge once or twice before we staggered it at all, but the reality of this level of HP on Behemoth is that its part HP and its stagger HP are going to be low enough to where we can actually stun lock it. 
But the more likely situation is these where you won't have to dodge at all, or your dodge is your discipline parry. So you use the discipline parry on an ember main here for say, and then you get the stagger pretty soon after that. You get part breaks and you are able to just continue to keep it on the ground after this. So for those of you who have actually wondered something about this, then maybe hopefully putting it on paper in terms of like, you know, how many extra dodges would you have to do is something that might help you in understanding why Sturdy isn't a DPS related strategy. And that's mainly coming from the fact that you do actually have to give up a ton of DPS to implement the strategy in the first place. Does this mean you shouldn't use the strategy? I mean, if you want to use the strategy, then go ahead. It's not like we are holding you at gunpoint and you have to never play sturdy again. It's just if you're wondering about it in terms of how much DPS would you gain by not dodging, when the reality is you do in fact lose a ton of DPS with the inclusion of sturdy on your build and some way to heal back the lost HP that you are losing. But yeah, hopefully you guys found this to be a nice little informational video with actual numbers and examples. Once again, drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, head over to the Twitch to get yourself a Hunt Pass or a Twitch bundle, which comes with a Twitch flare, a Twitch banner plant, and a Twitch arrival emote. Hope to catch you guys there. I've been Trevor Agobo, the Mr. Trails, and I will catch you guys next time.